Despite being just 8% of the world's landmass, New Zealand stands as an intriguing and distant island nation. The answer to this curiosity lies in a few revealing facts. Let's take a unique journey of exploration. First, when we glance at a world map, we can't help but notice that New Zealand is quite remote from the rest of the world. If you were to sit in a plane departing from Karachi or Mumbai, you'd cross the vast Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean. Embarking on a flight that could last anywhere from 17 to 25 hours before landing in New Zealand. Now, you might wonder how people made their way to such a far-off island in the world. The multiple perspectives on this journey are quite fascinating. According to New Zealand's official website, it was nearly a thousand years ago, between the years 850 and 1350, that the Maori people discovered and settled in New Zealand. These islands, nestled in the expansive Pacific Ocean, and collectively known as the Polynesian Islands, became home to those intrepid voyagers. The Maori, as they were known, were among the early inhabitants of these islands. They were Polynesians, part of the Great Polynesian Migration that spanned across the vast Pacific Ocean. To unravel this mystery, we delved into historical records of the Maori people. Surprisingly, we found a subtle but noteworthy difference between Maori traditions and those of New Zealand. The Maori people did not arrive in New Zealand during the 13th century, but rather, more than five centuries earlier, around 750 AD, when a Maori named Kup made a significant discovery. Kup was a fisherman who would catch fish for himself and his tribe. However, an unusual trend began to emerge. Whenever he set his fishing nets, his catch was mysteriously devoured by octopuses in the area and nothing would be left for him or his fellow tribe members. It turned out that the octopuses in this region had a particular liking for fish, and the Maori's fish-based sustenance was increasingly depleted. Confronted with this problem, the Maori devised a solution. Kup and some of his companions set out on a voyage across the sea, seeking a new land where they could find an abundance of food and resources. After a journey of several days, they came upon an island that was vastly different from their previous homes. This island, known as New Zealand, was a veritable paradise. Teeming with abundant wildlife, including food-bearing animals like sheep and goats, as well as a rich variety of fruits. Moreover, there were no other humans on the island. For Cupe and his tribe, it was a perfect place. Cupe returned with his companions to inform the others about their discovery. Cube's return marked the beginning of a new chapter for the Maori people, as they decided to leave their old islands and settle on this untouched land. With Cube leading the way, they embarked on the journey to the Bountiful Island, leaving their previous islands behind and introducing themselves to the New Zealand that we know today. This move not only offered them a land filled with sustenance, but also a fresh beginning in a place where they could thrive without interference from others. Let's dive into the intriguing history of New Zealand. In the 19th century, the Maori people began to settle in New Zealand. They lived peacefully and isolated from the rest of the world. There were no hostilities with anyone, as they remained quite distant from any potential threats. However, this tranquility was soon to change. During that period, Western nations were rapidly expanding their influence across the globe. Explorers were dispatched to discover new islands, countries, and continents, with the intention of expanding the power of European countries. Among these explorers, a Dutch explorer set his sights on the South Pacific Ocean in the hopes of finding a new continent. At that time, Europeans believed that there must be an undiscovered continent in that area. They anticipated that such a discovery would unlock numerous opportunities for European countries. This Dutch explorer embarked on a journey, and to his surprise, landed in New Zealand. However, when he attempted to settle there, a fierce conflict erupted between his crew and the local Maori population. Unfortunately, this conflict resulted in substantial casualties, and the explorer had no choice but to retreat. It wasn't until the late 18th century that British officer James Cook managed to reach New Zealand. 
James Cook's arrival marked a turning point, albeit one fraught with challenges. His crew engaged in a significant conflict with the local Maori chiefs, resulting in casualties on both sides. Nevertheless, on this visit, Cook created a detailed map of New Zealand. It was this map that enabled Europeans to begin reaching the island in the 19th century. In this new era of contact, smart deals and trading opportunities enticed the Maori people into engaging with British settlers. The British quickly established ports and within a century, gained complete control over New Zealand. A treaty known as the Treaty of Watanji was signed between the British and the Maori people. Following this treaty, New Zealand became officially part of the European and British Empire. At that time, the Maori population numbered around 200,000. Over the next century, the history of New Zealand would continue to evolve in remarkable ways. Rather than seeing a rise in population, New Zealand witnessed a decrease, dropping below 200,000 and reaching 40,000. The primary reasons for this decline can be traced back to when European settlers arrived, bringing with them diseases that were prevalent in Europe at the time. The issue was that the Maori people had not developed immunity to these diseases. Consequently, after European immigration, local Maori communities began to suffer from these illnesses, resulting in a significant number of deaths. In the 19th century, New Zealand had transformed into a very violent place. Just five years after the signing of the Treaty of Watanji, the British and local Maori communities were embroiled in a series of wars that persisted for the next 40 years. During these wars, a considerable number of local Maori were killed, ultimately leading to the cessation of hostilities in 1881, when all the prominent Maori chiefs had perished and the Maori movement had been effectively crushed. The British authorities had also realized that without involving the locals in the development process, they would not be able to advance. Immediately after the wars, the British government engaged the locals in the electoral process, making them key stakeholders in every development project. This led to a period of peace and progress in New Zealand. Nevertheless, there are lingering questions, as we touched on at the beginning of this video. Why is New Zealand's vast area so sparsely populated, and why do people predominantly reside in the northern part of the North Island? In essence, New Zealand's southern region is largely uninhabited due to its challenging geographical features. The entire area is characterized by high mountain ranges on all sides making it nearly impossible to inhabit or construct infrastructure. The land is so uneven that even building roads is a formidable task. On the eastern side, the land is more favorable, yet it remains largely undeveloped due to its remote location and inaccessibility. This is why the majority of New Zealand's population resides in the northern part of the North Island. Addressing this issue, New Zealand implemented policies immediately before World War II, which severely restricted immigration, particularly from Asia, including China, the Philippines, and India. These restrictions remained in place until the 1950s, at which point they were lifted. Following the relaxation of these restrictions, people from Asia, especially China, the Philippines, and India, began to settle in New Zealand. As a result, the immigrant population in New Zealand currently accounts for almost 27%, with the majority living in Auckland and its surrounding areas. Consequently, Auckland is considered one of the least affordable cities in the world. The shift in immigration patterns and the resulting demographic changes have shaped the modern population landscape of New Zealand. Auckland is one of those regions where the supply of housing is limited, but the demand is high. To address this issue, the New Zealand government is offering grants of up to $8,000 to encourage people to relocate 100 kilometers away from Auckland. The aim is to alleviate the pressure on Auckland's housing market and stabilize prices. What's particularly interesting is that New Zealand's entire agriculture industry thrives on exporting animal meat. Here in the North Island, the lush green land, thanks to ample rainfall, supports a substantial population of sheep, 
goats, and cattle. New Zealand's population is just around 5 million, while it's estimated that there are around 3 million sheep and goats, making it one of the world's top exporters of lamb and sheep wool. 95% of New Zealand's meat is exported, generating billions in revenue. New Zealand ranks among the top 50 economies in the world. And the primary source of revenue for this thriving economy is agricultural exports. Earning $40 billion just from meat exports is an incredible achievement. This should serve as motivation for countries like India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, all of which primarily depend on agriculture. If New Zealand can achieve such success, it should inspire these agricultural nations today.